Next, we will look at number conversions. And there are four big ideas in this section. The first is device driver. The second is successive refinement. The third is number conversion itself. And the last is we will see two types of loops. So a device driver, as we saw, is a set of software programs to facilitate using I.O. And so what we're going to do is create one of those driver functions. And so we are going to take a number and we're going to convert it to an ASCII string and output that ASCII string to the device. Successive refinement is a software development technique which allows us to go from the big idea into the fine details. And so it is a software development process and we'll use it to solve this problem. And then we will see two types of loops we will see where we, in the first loop, we will see when we don't know how many steps it is, it is unknown how many times through the loop we will run. And in that case, we're going to use a while loop. And in the second method, we will know exactly how many times, and we'll use a for loop. So what are we going to do in this lab? We're going to take a number, like the integer 123, and we're going to convert it to a set of ASCII characters. Quote 1, that's the ASCII code for 1, the ASCII code for 2, and the ASCII code for 3, and we're going to output these three ASCII numbers to the device. So what the human will see is 1, 2, 3. So we're converting what the computer sees into what the human sees. For instance, if the computer has the number 65432, then the output is going to be 36, 35, 34, 33, and 32. And we see one of the problems is at the time I'm writing this program, I don't know whether I'm going to output three characters, or where I'm going to output four, or five, or six, or seven. This is what is unknown at the time of execution. Whenever we write software, there are three questions that we wish to ask. First is where do we start? What's the starting point? Where do we begin? That's always a very troublesome thing. The second is how do we make progress? So, if we make progress in the correct direction, we'll eventually finish. And the last is the ending point, or when are we done? So, in this case here, we see that what we're going to do is we're going to have the number 1, 2, 3. And so, we begin with where do we start? Do we start with the biggest digit, or do we start with the smallest digit? Where do we start? And we'll look at that uh, when we get to the next one. And then the progress is we're going to create one digit of output. But the trick is after I create one digit of output, I need to create a simpler problem. It needs to get simpler. So for instance, if I tried to pick off the most significant digit, them naturally the one that I think I should get. Then the question for this is I would need to pick out the one, the hundredths digit. But for this number I'd have to pitch out the six, which is the ten thousandths digit. And so we see it's difficult to pick off the first one. Conversely, if I start with the ones digit, start with the other end of the number, we see in all cases the first digit, the ones digit, is easy to get because I can just take the number and find the modulo of 10. 
the number modulo of 10 will be the ones digit. And that will be easy to do. Similarly, if I adjust the number in this way after I get that digit, I can simplify my problem. And I'm going to simplify my problem such that this divide by 10 is going to produce a 123 down to the 12 and the 65432 will be reduced to a simpler problem of 6543. And then the ending point will be when this number n eventually goes to zero, I'll be done. So this is my strategy. So let me show you the method of software development called successive refinement. Successive refinement is to go from the big picture down into the fine details. So first, I'm going to think of my program in three steps. I'm going to initialize some things. I'm going to create some digits. And third, I'm going to output those digits. Because we saw in my method, I created the digits in the opposite order. I created them from the least significant digit to the most significant. But I want to output them in the other direction. So my big picture will be to create a storage of the digits and then output them in the other order. That's my big picture. I can refine that by thinking about how it is I'm going to create the digits. Right? I'm going to create a digit. And we saw we're going to create a digit using this digit equals n modulo 10. And we're going to simplify it by using this n equals n divided by 10. That's how I'm going to create the digits. And then I'm going to repeat until n is equal to 0. And next, I'm going to output the digits. But I've got to output them in the other order. So when I refine this some more, I think about what do I need to know? You remember what we do is we place our knowledge. Our knowledge have to go into variables. And so I'm going to create, we saw we had the parameter n, that was an obvious one. And we saw we had the digit d, which is an obvious one. We're going to need another one. We're going to need some sort of count. Uh, which will initialize to zero, and this count will tell me how many characters. And the other thing I'm going to need is some sort of buffer to store the data into. So as I create the characters, I will store them in the buffer. And this count, as I go through the buffer, can index into this, into this array. All right, so that's my initialization step, is to set the counter equal to zero. And the counter will tell me how many elements are in the buffer. So as we saw, we're going to create the number this way. We're going to create the digit this way. We're going to create the digit by taking n and modulo 10. That's the remainder of the division of n divided by 10. And then we'll reduce the simplicity of the problem, reduce the complexity of the problem by dividing by 10. Now the numbers are getting smaller and it has to, if I take any number and divide it by 10, it'll eventually hit zero. I have to place this number somewhere, so I'm going to store it in the buffer. I'm going to store the digit into the buffer. and increment my count. And you can see I'm getting pretty close to writing C code. So my last flowchart is going to be easy to translate. And now I will test to see if I'm done. If the number n is not 0, that means I have more digits. If the number is 0, 
then I'm done. Let's start with the example 123. The first time through, I'm going to get a d equals 3, and then this will be a 12, and then I'm going to store the 3 right here. Um, increment this to a 1, uh, keep repeating. The second time through, I'm going to get the 2, and I divide, this will be the 1, I'll store the 2 here, this goes to a 2. Third time through, I'm going to get the hundreds digit, this will become a 0, I will store the 1, and now count is equal to 3, telling me I have 3 elements, but now I'll drop out of the loop. That was this part of the flowchart. Now, let's finish the second half of the flowchart. I know that there is a counter which tells me how many digits I have. And I know I have a buffer which contains the digit in the opposite order. And so if counter equals three, I know the first digit that I actually want to output is a two, the index of two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the digit back from the buffer at counter minus 1. And that will give me the most significant digit. I will create an ASCII character out of it by adding a 0x30. And that will convert the 0 to 9 into an ASCII character quote 0 to quote 9. And then I'll output, I'll output this uh, number to the device. In our case here, we're going to output it to the UART. And then we will uh, repeat this loop. I know exactly how many times to go through the loop because I have an initial value for counter. And that will be, um, and then I'll decrement the counter, counter minus minus, uh, and then if the counter I'm going to, I want to output, as we can see from the, from the things, I want to output the 2, the 1, and the 0, and so I'm going to quit. As long as counter is greater than or equal to 0, I will go back. But if it is equal to minus 1, then I'm done. So we saw the, the process of a successive refinement is to take the big picture and add details to it. And there were three fundamental things you should remember when we write software. Is where to start, how to make progress, and how to end. And so in this case here, we started with the ones digit. We made progress by uh, taking the, the remainder and simplifying, and we got done when n is equal to 0. Let's look at the other example, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. This buffer, again, would have had the numbers in the opposite order, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Count would have been equal to a 5 because there are five digits. And then we would have wanted to output them in this order. Six, and then a five, and then a four, and then a three, and then a two. And this loop here would have reversed the order from two to six to six to two. 